Hey everybody, uh, my name is Chris Fitzgerald. I am the Prep Dig General Manager and I'm here talking with one of my good friends and uh, one of the uh, good people to know in the volleyball world and Lauren Hanson of My Recruiting Assistant. So Lauren, if you just want to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about what you do and uh, how you help these athletes. Hey everyone, um, my name is Lauren Hansen, as Chris said, and I know him and I are both um, really sad that we are not out and about seeing all of you play. Um, but what we are doing right now at my recruiting assistant is kind of helping guide you through this process. And, and that's kind of what we are. We're a personal advocate for our athletes. Um, we are not software based at all. Um, so what we do is from start to finish, we help guide you through the process from editing videos to reaching out to college coaches, developing target lists of schools, um, getting you ready for visits, et cetera. So it's a little bit of a surface level of what we do. Yeah, and, and with recruiting and not being able to play, and you know, I know you're in contact with a lot of coaches and that's really hard to, uh, for them to not be able to go out and recruit. So I guess the biggest thing is, you know, especially for those kids that are, uh, you know, a panic might be a strong word, but um, who are a little bit unease about their situation because this is gonna be a really crucial time for them. Like, what can you tell them to kind of ease their mind or make them feel a little bit more, uh, comfortable during this time of uh, quarantine and not being able to play? Yeah, I think that's a great question and one that I get almost every day, if not every hour. Um, so the biggest thing is that every athlete is in the same boat. It's not like the, the playing field is even right now. So it's not like other athletes are doing things that are different from what you're doing. Um, everyone is at home. Everyone only has whatever they have in their garage or um, in their house to work with. So I think um, patience and is key and just to be, try to just do what you can at home. Um, I think a lot of coaches also are adjusting to this new normal. So they're also working at home, homeschooling their kids and they're trying to figure this out. So they also have to figure out what they're supposed to do um, day to day as well. So I think just be patient. Um, and college coaches, I think the biggest thing we're all forgetting is that they have a team as well. So they still have to engage their team and get, keep them motivated through this. So they've got 15 to 20 athletes, if not more, that they have to make sure are going to be ready for the fall because most likely they're not going to be in the gym anytime soon. So patience is key. Absolutely. I mean, even for us, we're having a hard enough time, like waiting to get back on the court and see everybody and, you know, be a part of what we love to do. Um, so I guess with that being said, you know, I know there's probably a lot of juniors, the class of 2021, um, they kind of had this timeline that they were planning on uh, following and wanting to be able to commit by this date. Um, maybe some of them are feeling that pressure to, to meet that expectation, whether it's for them themselves. Um, you know, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about being able to be flexible and uh, adjust and kind of like you said, uh, this is something that everybody's going through. It doesn't just affect the kids in this part of the country or, or this right. division of colleges. Um, yeah, we're all, we're all kind of uh, cuffed here. So yeah, anything that you can talk to the, the class of 2021 about? Yeah, I think that the class of 21 is tough. Um, I think they've been through a lot of rule changes, just like we're going to talk about the class of 22 as well. Um, and a lot of them, I know many of my athletes had scheduled visits in March and April. So that really put a huge hindrance on where they're going with their process. So what we're doing is having them develop those relationships even further. So whether that's going to go to a Zoom meeting like we're doing today or a FaceTime call, really making sure that the coaches that they're talking to are the ones that um, are, you know, that they're really diving into that with them and getting to know them, um, getting to know a player on the team. So I'm encouraging a lot of my athletes like, hey, why don't you talk to X player at this college and find out if there's anything that you should know about the coaching staff, the university, uh, the players on the team, make sure you really fit into the culture in the gym. Um, I think there's a lot of research that we can be doing right now with the class of 21. Uh, a lot of coaches are having them take virtual tours. This is a new big thing. Um, I actually had a coach give a virtual tour um, on FaceTime on Monday. So this is new. Um, so I think we might get to that point. Um, 
let's say that we are closed off now for the next couple of months and these class of 21 kids that are very active in this process really want to um, make a commitment. I think what's going to happen is you're going to see some offers over the phone um, and without a campus visit. And I think this is a really tough thing on both a college coach's perspective and an athlete's because this has never really happened before. This, this is unheard of in the college world. So um, that's why we're going to probably get into these virtual tours and things like that. So what I can say for the class of 21, consider, you know, continue to send email updates, be creative with it. Um, send your workout, send your um, at home setting on the wall, annoy your parents and set all day long on the wall. I mean, that kind of stuff, like college coaches want to see that you are human. They want to see genuine, real stuff that you're feeling as well. So um, send updates to them as frequently as you can and continue to develop those relationships so that when you are ready to make your decision and things open back up again, that you have a clear answer like, hey, I know this is a school that I want to go to. Yeah, I know it can be really, you know, awkward at first for, uh, you know, student athletes to just even talk on the phone with college coaches. But I kind of yeah. feel like during this time, we're, we're getting used to having the Zoom meetings, you know, talking on the phone, even with if it's a, a friend, a family member. And so, you know, whenever you're, you're in a time of adversity, like we all are right now, it kind of brings you out of your comfort zone to, to learn new skills and uh, yeah. do something that you never thought you'd be able to that you would say yeah I'm, I'm cool with that so <laughs> right um yeah. well I know the class of 2022 and 2023 uh there isn't any direct communication as far as um the recruiting process but June 15th is is, is, yeah. is arriving and that's going to open things up for the class of 2022 as far as uh, communicating so um you know, hopefully kids will be able to go to camps uh, this summer. Again, everything is still kind of up in the air. And um, just like this all affects us differently. But uh, what can you say to those athletes who are in the class of 2022 or 2023 when they uh, want to communicate with coaches, but it's just not quite there yet? Okay, I think I'll break this up into the both classes. I'll start with 22. So I think the 22 classes is hit the hardest in all of this. So last year they had the rule change happen um, on May 1st, um, and that was really difficult. So, but the really cool thing about the class of 22 that I think sometimes we all forget is that they can talk to division two coaches right now. So, but they have to call that coach. So what's happening right now is I would encourage athletes that definitely know that they want to play at that level is to start making those phone calls. Um, we help our athletes set those up, so which has been working out really well, and it's giving them the ability to continue this process. The same thing with like NAIA, they have no rules. So I think that sometimes we forget that, and if you are interested and you know that NAIA, you want a small school, you want a private school, you want something like that, and you know that they have your major, start reaching out to those schools in the class of 22. Um, there is still a lot you can do. Um, also, what's happening is the NCAA is allowing Division I coaches to send emails to recruiting coordinators saying if they're interested in a certain player. So we are starting to get those on our end here at MRA, um, and we're able to at least develop lists um, for our kids in terms of where they rank. So that when, like you said, when college camps start coming out, we can start having those conversations of where, where do you spend your money this summer? Um, so I think the, the class of 22 is doing a really good job of continuing to communicate. And I think that's all they need to do right now. I am recommending bi-weekly emails to college coaches. And so that's what I would recommend to everyone is, is keep, keep yourself engaged in the process and keep communicating. Um, if you keep getting camp emails back, that's okay. That's all they can do right now. So consider that a good thing. Um, and again, same thing with the class of 21 that I said, be creative. Um, as, you know, make a at home workout video, make a video just of yourself doing, do a video update instead of an email update. Um, there are so many different things that you can do to set yourself apart from the rest of the crowd right now. Um, being, being proactive, um, is really important. Um, and, and also, you know, being persistent in this too. I say persistence is key all the time. And my athletes are probably really annoyed by that by now. Um, but you have to send multiple emails. It's not just going to be one email and all of a sudden you're going to go to a school. Um, we're not all um, Olympic level athletes. And so we have to realize that it does take persistence. So 
Um, the class of 22, all I can keep saying is keep communicating. That's what you can do right now and start talking about summer camps with your club coaches, recruiting coordinators, whoever you're working on this process with. Um, for the class of 23, there's, you're still in a really difficult position. So there's no communication. Um, you have maybe sent some emails out here and there. So what we are recommending is that you talk with your recruiting coordinator or your club coach again about camp recommendations so that you can figure out what you're going to do this summer. So, Absolutely. And I, and I know uh, through the coaches that you know, I know um, at the NAI Division II level, um, yeah. I mean, coaches switch. They're always, they're, they're going to different yeah. schools. They're going to different levels. But I, I really feel like the, the bottom line is, I mean, these coaches generally are looking to build relationships with athletes. And that comes down to they, they're, they're happy to get to know you and also help you in your, in your process. So it might not be a question about the school, but, uh, you know, just being able to have uh, communication with coaches about um, maybe they've been through the recruiting process as a student athlete or uh, different experiences from their kids. And I just think it's really uh, beneficial to get that, get that rolling, you know, wherever it may be, no matter what level or division it is um because it's just kind of fun how things work out with again the the coaching carousel I guess you could say so yeah it's um, a very small group of people so yeah. I mean just like you said like you could start talking to a coach at the division two level and all of a sudden they move to the division one level um and so I think keeping those relationships is extremely important absolutely um well anything else uh you'd like to add just uh uh, maybe even to parents, because I mean, the parents, uh, I know a lot of parents are probably um, masking their, um, uh, if you want to call it anxiety for the, for their, for their kid, you know, uh, you know, they're hurting because they just want to see their kids back on the court playing. But at the same time, um, they know that there's a, a college component to this as well. So uh, any advice or any uh, words of wisdom to parents as far as uh, uh, guiding their child through uh, this process? Yeah, I think that, again, going back to what we first talked about is patience. And I think trying to instill that um, within your family right now is is really hard to do. And I think something that we all need to do, including myself, um, and patience and positivity right now and making sure that your kids are feeling that from you. Um, because as parents, you know, we start to get very anxious about this process and trying to figure out what the next step is for your child. And um, I think as long as you have a plan of attack in the recruiting process for emailing your communication, whether you're doing virtual tours online, whether you are cutting a new highlight reel, just have a plan in place and just stick to that. I think what we're doing here is sending a checklist out every month, okay, so that our kids know, like, here's what you should be doing this month. And as long as you keep them on track and stay patient and stay positive, I think this process is going to take care of itself. And I think that's really hard to understand right now. But again, we're all on the same playing field right now. Everyone is sitting at home and know in, in two months from now, this could all be over and we could be back playing volleyball and playing the sport that we love. I, I hope so. <laughs> um, I guess final thing, Lauren, uh, you know, I love following your social media from, you know, yeah. the, the highlight videos that you post to, you know, the, the different themes that you have to the pictures to the motivational quotes uh, so what are some ways that kids can and, and families can uh, follow you whether it be on social media or whether it be just getting in contact with you in general yeah so you can follow our social media we do all, most of our stuff on instagram um, and then we have twitter and facebook at my recruiting assistant um, and we are a, we're posting uh, recruiting tips and different things that you can be doing as well so a lot of free content out there we have a, a planner that's available for free too if you follow us on social media so we're happy to send you that that can at least get you started on the recruiting process and I think is a huge um, value to anyone that's like what should I be doing right now um, so follow us on social media and you can contact that contact us that way all righty well hey I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk with us Lauren and uh uh, we'll be posting this here uh, probably within the next day or so. And uh, hopefully we can see all of you like on the court doing what we love to do. Um, I never thought I'd say this, but I'm, I'm missing the whistles of a convention center right now. I know. So, I'm missing concrete floors. Yes. Yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm going to have to get back in the shape of standing all day. So. All, <laughs> all right. right. Thanks, thanks so a lot. Much, and uh, thanks everybody for tuning in.